few months ago, we took a look at a prototype for the Corsair Xenion Flex 45 WQHD 240 monitor. Now we have the actual retail version of what it is that you could expect to buy as soon as they become available. So we'll talk about what's different, what they changed. I'm kind of curious as to how some of the mechanism feels since that prototype was very, very prototypey. Uh, but yeah, I, I have been excitedly waiting for this monitor because I think I'm going to be basing my entire setup around this guy. Tired of looking at that ugly NVIDIA 40 series adapter? Then CableMod has you covered with their direct PSU replacement sleeve 12 volt high power cables. Made from 16 gauge individually sleeved wire supporting up to 600 watts, managed neatly with pre-installed cable combs and available in a variety of colors, the CableMod C-Series Pro NVIDIA certified 12 volt high power cable is a must have for any 40 series GPU owner. To see the complete list of colors and supported power supplies, follow the link in the description below. I'm not gonna go into too much of a deep dive of like the specs of the panel. They pretty much are the same because the, the panel itself, the actual OLED part, which is a collaboration with LG and Corsair, that hasn't really changed. What's sort of changed over time here is like the power brick, they did an upgrade there, uh, the firmware, some of the little bugs that were worked out. What I'm most interested in, because this is where Corsair was very involved, is the mechanism of which the, the base, the electronics uh, in the base, the flexibility part of it, the arms that control the flexibility. Because remember, what I said last time was a very, very rough prototype. Like even the handles didn't even retract. Well, check this out. They, they go back in now. So that's a nice feature to have. Um, but the name. You know, we, we give people a hard time all the time about coming up with some of the stupidest model names ever. That might make sense internally, but if you've ever tried to be like, what was that monitor called? And what was the model number? If you go searching it up and it's like 16 characters long and there's a bunch of dash versions of it and you're trying to find the exact one you were looking for, uh, this one actually just makes sense. It's a 45 WQHD 240. So there you go. It is a 45 inch 21 by nine ultra wide. Um, 3440 by 1440 resolution, which, yeah, it's a little bit on the large pixel size given the format of it being a 45 inch diagonal measured panel. 0 0.03 second response time. So yeah, you know, everyone talks about like one millisecond response time, that's usually a fake number. That's not fake with this because these are OLEDs. And this, I know it's not the first OLED panel on the, on the market, it is the first bendable OLED panel that, you, that is available for your desktop. The contrast ratio, first and foremost, with OLEDs is a tr tr pretty much a true infinite because each individual pixel is emitting its own light, which means you're also gonna have the benefit of not having a ton of blue light with shining in your face. We all know blue light can cause headaches, it can cause anxiety, it can cause uh, all sorts of issues with like not being able to sleep. It has to do with the way your brain processes the blue light, in the subconscious part of your brain that you don't even know how it's affecting you. Because each OLED is giving off perfect color rendition, at least 100% sRGB, Adobe sRGB in this case, there's not like a blue hue or blue tint to all of it because of the fact that you're not dealing with an LED array that is backlighting through pixel LCD gates. So you have perfect color, perfect contrast because when the LED, excuse me, when the OLED is off, it is a perfect black or like an infinite black versus when it is lit. If you have ever gone to Best Buy and gone to like the Magnolia section and looked at the high-end OLED panels, and you've ever noticed how amazing it looks in dark scenes, then you know having that on a desktop computer is going to make for some of the most amazing gaming that you can possibly have, especially if you like to play any sort of cinematic game that has a lot of dark scenes, because part of the issues with dark scenes, especially in shooters, is you don't see the enemy hiding in the corner camping in the dark, and so you die to it. But with an OLED, you're gonna see that guy now because those gray pixels and those dark pixels of him hiding in the corner, they're gonna illuminate and they're gonna show him. But in terms of the specs though, 240 hertz refresh rate on an OLED, it is gonna be an absolute beast when it comes to motion blur or lack thereof when it comes to motion blur because the pixel response time at that 0.03 milliseconds is absolutely bonkers when it comes to how fast the light can turn on and off. And a lot of times they cheat and they measure a gray to gray. So it's not all the way off because of the fact that it doesn't go perfect black because of the fact that it's backlight through an LCD gate. I know I sound like an OLED like fanboy here. I truly am. I have OLEDs in my house. It's one of those that like once I experienced it, you can't go back. The downside to OLED is one of the ways they're getting that awesome saturation 
And that awesome uh, contrast ratio is through glossy screens. That's the drawback to OLEDs. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna do the peel because this is also really glossy because it still has the, um, the plastic cover on it. They have kind of a mixture here. It's like sort of matte, but not really. You gotta savor it. It's <laughs> such a perfect feel of that. So yeah, this was obviously a screen protector on there. There is some gloss to this. It's not as bad as like a TV, but it's definitely glossy versus like a matte screen. The problem with the matte finishes is as you know, everything kind of looks a little bit fuzzy and the contrast ratio isn't as good and the colors don't pop as much. Enough about OLEDs. The functionality of this panel, being a 45 inch panel, is the fact that you can have it go from a perfectly flat panel to up to an 800R bend. Now that's the curvature. The problem with the prototype was the arm took, had a lot of tension in it. So it felt very uncomfortable to, to bend it. And it took a lot of strength to bend it. And you gotta bend till you hear, there's a couple of clicks. And the clicks determine which R rating you're currently at. And the final click is 800R where it's very curved. And you don't have to have a thousand R if you don't want it or a 1200 or an 800, you choose. It's a choose your own adventure curvature. One of the things I mentioned earlier was that they made a revision to the power brick. They actually went from a 230 watt to a 240 watt. The original brick that came in the box was a 230. Um, they sent us separately a 240. This has to do with uh, a number of reasons. I mean, OLED does draw a fair amount of power because like I said, each individual pixel is creating its own light. So they can be a bit power hungry. Same thing with like TVs and stuff. So they went with a little bit extra buffer in terms of the, the power brick. So we synced that to the, or calibrated it to the pixel retention and uh, it's all working great. No issues there. Um, that's another thing I wanna point out too before we get too involved in this. I mentioned this in the previous video, I'm mentioning it again. One of the things that scares people about OLEDs, specifically in computers is pixel retention. Anyone that's ever used an OLED with like a, a PC in the past or an earlier version OLED TV, remember OLEDs have been around for, we're going on almost 10 years now. But anyway, if you used it with any of the desktop or uh, even on TVs, if you watch the same channel all the time, ESPN or whatever, and you got the logo always showing in the corner, burn in retention. And that is where the actual pixels themselves will actually create a burned image on the layer of the screen. However, pixel retention is something that we're or anti-pixel retention is something that is taken very serious uh, with OLED TVs and monitors these days. It's constantly doing a pixel shift where you don't even notice it because it's moving it so dynamically in moving scenes. Um, it does a, a pixel sweep. All of the features that you would expect for pixel retention or anti-pixel retention in OLEDs exist here. So don't worry about your taskbar and all of that causing burn in, it's not gonna happen. Also too, you don't have to crank the brightness on this and the cranking of brightness is what often leads to pixel retention in any sort of screen because the brighter it is, the hotter it is and then it can cause the retention. We're only at 45% brightness on this right now and this is about as bright as I would leave it on my desktop because it is a thousand nit HDR panel. Um, it also has uh, G-Sync, or excuse me, it's G-Sync compatible and has AMD FreeSync Premium installed on this. So anyway, here are the arms that pop out. The one on the bottom is always showing here. This is your tilt. So you have about five degrees down and about 15 degrees up, which is pretty standard. There is no swivel because of the fact that it is a solid base here that has controls uh, in this back piece right here. So as you can see, this piece right here has got your connectivity. So we've got two HDMI, we've got a display port, we've got a USB-C DP. So you can provide charging to a laptop or a USB-C device, or you can even bring in um, an image through USB-C on here from a laptop hub or whatever. Um, and then we've got two USB ports on here, a USB-C connectivity port, um, which again, like I said, for monitors and stuff or hubs or any other USB-C type device, and then your power plug down there. So all of the controls and all the PCB stuff needed for this are here. There are some electronics built into the mechanism right here for the panel, but almost all of it is inside of this component right here. So that's why you're not seeing a VESA mount. Also too, um, it's not, a very heavy panel. I don't have a scale to weigh it. In fact, I do have a kitchen scale and it probably can handle this weight. 
exceeding the scale <laughs> ability. Forget that part. If I had to make an honest guess on this, I'd say 20 pounds with the base and everything. So the handles now, I'm pretty sure this is plastic. And the other ones were, were heavy duty metal, but they did tell us that those were a prototype and they are subject to change and they clearly did. It doesn't feel flimsy in any way. I just wanted to point out that these are plastic now. So when it comes to bending it, it still takes a good amount of force. Okay, I think that's as far as it goes. So there's only one click. Before, ooh, I hate that sound. Okay. The handles feel a little bit flimsier than the prototype when you go to bend it. So where it's bending is actually right here. This part's extending out. It's kind of hard to see, but it barely moves. But this part right here is what's sliding and the click is in there. So when you go back to flat, let me go ahead and bend it here again. So there's a hinge in here and then it slide, hinges there. That's where the clicks are. When it's bent, to go back to flat, you have to go kind of past it a little bit, but I actually think it's easier to just put your hand on the bracket. There you go. It gives a little bit of support so that the arm can't move with the bend and then just come back. But if I go ahead now and reach all the way across my table, once you hear the clicks, that's when you stop. I know it's all creaky. That's the amount of curve. Now the clicks just tell you where to stop. You don't have to go there. So you could just, do a slight curve if you want. I might do a slight curve like that. Another thing I want to point out too is the original price of this was $21.99. I personally, in my, in my opinion, if you're going to build a high-end computer, you owe it to yourself to also have a high-end panel that matches the quality that that computer can produce. If you're putting a 3090 in there, or a 7900 in there, or even a 6900, 3080, whatever, you can generate some amazing gaming capabilities with that PC. You shouldn't bottleneck your gaming experience by having a subpar panel. Bending aside, all the cool features that exist with this panel, the fact that it's OLED, in my opinion, is what's gonna give this the complete next level experience for your high-end gaming desktop. So you owe it to yourself to at least consider a panel of this caliber if you have a high-end computer. I would never recommend a $2,000 panel for a mid-range computer. It would make zero sense to have your panel cost more than your computer unless you're using this panel for more than just your computer. Multiple inputs and you're using it more than just a monitor, but a full on like home theater slash desk theater situation, then it has a lot of value there. So you owe it to yourself to consider that. All right, before we get out of here, we need to show you what I mean about some of the dark scenes. I did this in my last video and we're gonna show it again, but there are some amazing benefits to OLED when it comes to dark scenes. So before we go ahead and do the on-screen demo of, of the you know amazing low light black levels and stuff, um, I forgot to mention the front side here also has five gigabit per second USB ports, your, your headphone jack here because you can use this monitor as a sound card and plug in your headphones right there, which is nice to have it right in front of you. Uh, just a big giant input button so that you can quickly select different inputs, power button. But now we can actually take a look at the on-screen display. This was all locked out before. Now remember, you do have a picture-in-picture -picture setting on here as well. I don't have another input set up, but you could have, let's say you're doing some computer gaming and you have a, I don't know, there's a hockey game or a football game or something on that you wanna watch. You could picture-in-picture -picture it, have it in the corner with the game going while you're playing on the computer. One thing to keep in mind though, because it is a WQHD at 45 inches, the text does look a little bit pixely. That's where 4K is definitely, um, you know, they had to make a choice. They, they couldn't go 4K wide on this because of the fact that they had to obviously keep the price down, in my opinion. I, and I, I'm okay with the text being the way it is. That's not a deal breaker for me, but for some people it might be. So if you push up on the D-pad, that brings up quick menu for brightness. Zero is pretty dim, but as you can see, you can't completely dim it out because the OLEDs are creating their own light. So there's no backlight to dim. They have to be on, right? Down is the preset for your different color modes. Right is your input source, which is redundant. There's an input button next to it. And then left is volume. Like I said, this is a pass-through. So there's no speakers built into it, but there is a pass-through for this headphone jack. 
So AMD FreeSync Premium is on by default. Image retention reset, start refresh. If for, sentient, if for some reason you were starting to get maybe some in, uh, image retention, which won't happen, but if you just want to refresh it, you can run the image retention reset. It takes about five minutes and then it will kind of go through a whole pixel refresh on the screen, which is fine. Okay, so you got your USB-C alt mode on there. Um, audio is just volume, input source, and then information, all the current firmware version and stuff on here. There's actually a newer firmware I need to load on here because uh, it's gonna be the one that load, goes for you guys. Not a whole lot to really change or control with the display itself. Again, it's OLED. It's very specific on the way it's designed to run, but you can change like brightness. You can turn on and off HDR, turn down or up the sharpness a little bit. Uh, but you notice there wasn't really any color settings because other than the presets of like HDR, game, movie, all that sort of stuff, you're not going in there and having to color calibrate it because it's already calibrated perfectly. So I'm using Heaven Benchmark right now just because I want to get to the dark scenes. There's a night scene in here and it's, it's so freaking gorgeous. The colors pop and not like that fake, like TN popped, but it popped in like everything being wrong. Uh, no, the colors are so vibrant, but they're accurate. Blades of grass. I never really noticed there were blades of grass sitting right there. Like, look at this. So you just imagine you're playing a game and it's super dark. Like you can still see the blades of grass in there. You might not even be able to see it on camera, but you can see the blades of grass. So this is actually an HK, uh, 8, 8K HDR test, which is funny because it's only showing 4K here. Maybe because I don't have an 8K panel. Maybe it has, I don't, the browser doesn't, I don't know, whatever. But look at the, look at the blacks. And here's another thing. Look, the way that LCDs, and you know, LED LCDs and stuff get their, their contrast ratios is through a, um, what they call local dimming. So that is where you will have a ton of different zones on the back of the panel, which is where the backlighting is, that will dim out to be able to give a better contrast ratio or lower the brightness. But the problem is this can do it pixel at a time. The amount, so I have, you wanna know how many local dimming zones I have on this? Well, 3440 times 1440. That is how that number, I can't remember what it is, millions, is how many local dimming zones that I have because each pixel can dim. So you get this, white text on a black background without a halo around it, which is how local dimming works. So, and, and then you see how it just blends into the black bar on the side because of the fact that these pixels are literally off. I know there's people out there right now going, it's not that big of a deal, Jay. Yes, it is. It is once you experience it. My, my recommendation to you, is if, if you're worried about wanting, about spending the money, just maybe don't experience it, but you should. <laughs> It'll ruin you. Like the, the amount of detail that is visible in like his suit right here, where I guess it's supposed to be like, normally he was blue and red, but this is like a black and red suit. So you can see the amount of detail, you can see the webbing right there in there, but the amount of detail that's right here, you see a shoulder outline, you can see the details on this pillar, the suit. You can see how the suit has the individual stitching that you can see, you can still see it over here. Normally you can't see that. I could absolutely sit here and just watch movies on this panel. This is why I was saying this panel is more than just an expensive PC gaming panel. It is an amazing productivity panel because of its accuracy and color. It is an amazing content consumption panel because of its HDR 1000 nit. Um, if you're watching HDR content through either a Blu-ray player, 4K Blu-ray player, or even streaming content, let's face it, we all have lots of streaming services now. If you have it hooked up to any sort of a, like a cable box, um, HDR is present now on modern consoles. With all those inputs, you could use this panel with all of those things. Anyway, guys, if I'm gonna tell you right now, this, this is another passion of mine is, is just panels and TVs and things like that. I don't talk about it a whole lot in the channel. We're gonna start doing more with it, but it's another passion of mine and, it's, and it's, it's the thing your brain is freaking interacting with the most. Your eyeballs are looking at the screen. The screen should be pleasant to look at. So anyway, this, is, this panel right here is actually going on my desk. I, when, I, when we put together this office, that was around the time that this panel came in, I think it was somewhere around there. I think we were still under construction when this panel came in for us to do the review on. And I said, all right, I'll put a, a 4K panel on my desk right now just to kind of get me by because this is what was intended to end up on my desk all along once I saw, once I saw it. And now that it's here, I am beyond excited. So anyway, I'm not here to sell you the panel. I'm just here to tell you about it. My personal opinion is it is everything I had hoped it would be. 
LG, who is the panel supplier for the actual OLED itself, is a huge staple in the industry when it comes to OLED technologies. They've pioneered a ton of it. They don't pay me to say any of this. I've, I, all my OLEDs at home are LG. I have an LG C9. You guys know that was an amazing panel. People were using those as monitors because of how good they were, even though they weren't designed to be a monitor. And the fact that you collaborate with, uh, you know, the bendability aspects that Corsair has helped come up with, with in, in conjunction with LG, I can't see how you could go wrong. And the fact that they even reduced the price of it before they even launched it. So there you go. All right, guys, sound off down below. I know many of you are not buying into it, but that's because I think you honestly just have not experienced OLED. And I think once you have, and maybe as OLED progresses and the prices continue to come down as they have, the first OLED TVs that were out were over $10,000. Now you can go get a 4K OLED TV at Best Buy for a grand. It's, it's definitely worth taking a look at. And the prices over time will get better, but I'm gonna bend it this way now. And I, I'm just gonna keep watching it. <laughs> 